Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will do something different. Usually my videos are based on various administrative tasks for uh, NetApp and Iceland and various other uh, NAS uh, products. But today we will do something different and we will discuss some of the sample question for uh, NS0158. NS0158 is the latest uh, certification exam uh, for uh, NetApp admin who administrator 7 mode NetApp and cluster mode NetApp. So NS0158 is specifically for uh, cluster mode NetApp data on tap 9.1. So for data on tap 8.3, NS0156 was the code I believe, but that has been expired. And if you want any certification for NetApp, then uh, NS0158 is the one for you. These are the questions that I have. I have around uh, five to six questions that we are going to discuss one by one. Please note that this is not a dump and uh, this is only for the reference. You should not take uh, these questions to be unexpected questions in your certification exam. So let's start one by one. So you don't have to note everything because I will put a link in the description where you will get all these questions along with the uh, answer with some extra explanations on it. So first question that I have is regarding storage fail over give back process, which statement is true? So there are four options. So basically this question is asking during the give back process, which step occurs first? Returning ownership of data aggregate or returning ownership of root aggregate. So if you will read all the four options, then C option is the correct answer. Here it is mentioned during give back node CL101 return ownership of the root aggregate to CL102 before returning ownership of the data aggregate. So this is the correct answer. So during failover, data aggregate ownership is transferred to its partner node and then the root aggregate ownership is transferred to its partner node. But in case of uh, give back, the root aggregate ownership is transferred first then the data aggregate because the ownership of root aggregate should be transferred so that uh, the initial steps will be completed which is required for the data aggregate to work. So here the answer will be C. The second question is which NetApp management tool verifies the disk self cabling of an existing NetApp cluster. So this is kind of related to the configuration or the initial cabling configuration. So system setup is not the answer because uh, this will be used while bringing of the cluster. Config Advisor is the answer. This is a Windows based tool and you can download this tool and install in any of the Windows server. And then you can import your uh, NetApp uh, cluster by using the cluster management interface. And then you have to run the report and it will show you whether all the cabling connection has been done properly or not. So C and D are not the option because these are used for administration of uh, the NetApp cluster. On command unified manager, it is for monitoring tool. System manager, it's for the administrative task like volume creation, CFS creation, NFS export policy creations and all other stuff. So here the answer will be B. The third question is you are configuring an on tap solution for FC host connectivity. In this scenario, how should the cluster be configured? So here the two answer we have to select. So let's go one by one. The first answer is the SVM must be configured for Ethernet lift. So this will not be an answer because we are dealing with FC connectivity here and Ethernet is for IP based. Second answer that it has given FC port must be configured as initiator. This will also be not the answer because initiator is something related to the host site configurations. So the storage frame or the NAS frame or the SAN frames are always considered as target. So these are not initiators. So that leaves us to the last two options that is C and D which will be the answer because FCP must be licensed on this cluster. So this is the correct one. FCP is not a free inbuilt protocols that uh, comes with an NetApp cluster. We have to purchase additional license and then only FCP will work. 
and the last option is FC port must be configured as target which I have explained a bit earlier so here the answer will be C and D now the fourth question is if you have a flex wall volume with lungs and need to set policies to prevent an ENO SPC error on the host in this scenario which two commands will keep the LUN available to the host here also we have to select two options so let me explain what exactly this term is this particular term is related to an error which will be given by unix host if there are not enough space available in the LUN which is assigned to that particular unix host so basically we are dealing with uh, the space issue here so we have four options volume auto size snapshot auto delete snapshot delete and volume size so which of these four options will help to keep enough available space in the LUN so volume auto size will not be the answer why because even if we are auto sizing the volume the extended size is not going to the LUN unless you are manually allocating some space to the LUN so volume size is used for uh, modification or addition of the volume so this will not be the answer so b and c will be the answer because snapshot auto delete and snapshot delete because these two commands will give some space to the LUN allocated to the host so in this case the answer is uh, b and c so the fifth question is to log into the cluster with the uh, on command system manager a cluster administrator account must be authorized for which two application types so on command system manager is basically the tool where uh, netapp administrator will log in and perform the administrative task like volume creation cfs share creations and all those and uh, in order to access that which two protocols should be useful for it so ssh is not the answer why because it usually deals with uh, unix clients and on command system manager is not a unix uh, based tool and service processor also it will not happen because the service processor does not uh, help in logging to the on command system manager so that leaves us http protocol and on tap api so here the answer will be a and c so in this video i am just uh, overall discussing the answer for this question so the link that will provide in the description will give you an additional explanation along with the answer as well so the last question is when two node cluster is expanded which cluster configuration would be supported so here the question is you have already two node cluster and if you have a plan to expand it then how many node you should add it so here there are four options so c and d are not the answer because three nodes switched to cluster and three nodes switchless cluster is not possible why because there are three nodes so three node is not uh, serving the purpose of redundancy and the high availability feature now we can choose between a and b here first question is four node switched cluster and four node switchless cluster so four node switchless cluster is not possible because uh, in cluster the inter cluster switches will be present and uh, each node will be connected to those switch so that the communication will happen between the nodes through those switches so switchless cluster is not possible so the answer is left is answer a so that's all for this video guys these questions were for reference and uh, hope this question may be help you guys to prepare for your ns0 158 exam so if you have any questions on any of these questions or if you think the answer that i gave here is different than yours please leave a comment in the comment section don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that uh, whenever i upload a new video on san and nas technology you will be notified immediately